Please read us a story on there. We'll all gather round. Dear old man, sit in your favorite chair. We'll sit all around. All around, dear old man. It was almost Christmas, and Old Bear and his friends were having a wonderful time decorating the playroom and the Christmas tree. They'd nearly finished. Just one more decoration for the tree, said Bramwell Brown. And one more piece of holly, said Old Bear, tucking a sprig behind a picture. And one more strip for the paper chain, said Rabbit, licking his last piece of paper and managing to stick it to both his paws. And then to his tummy. And finally, in its proper place, to join up the rest of the chain. <coughs> said Duck, who everyone had forgotten was still holding the other end of the paper chain in his beak. You'd better drop it, Duck, said Bramwell as he helped Rabbit and Sailor to hoist the chain to the ceiling, like a flag. Duck unstuck his beak and dropped the chain just as his feet were about to leave the ground. There, said Rabbit, we've done it. That's the last bit. It can't be, said Little Bear, looking through the decorations box for another decoration but finding only crumpled tissue paper. I don't feel Christmassy enough yet. Well, we've done all the things for ourselves, said Bramwell. Perhaps we ought to do something for each other. That always feels very Christmassy. Good idea, said Old Bear. I'll make us all a very special Christmas cake. And he set off toward the kitchen to get started. I know, said Rabbit hopping aboard the wooden train. I could give everyone special rides to see the lights. Why don't you help me decorate the carriages, Duck? You could be the conductor. Little Bear scratched his head. Will you help me find a job, Bramwell? he asked, looking round the playroom for something helpful to do. And it was then that they both noticed the doll's house. Standing in a dark corner of the playroom, it had been completely forgotten. I think I have an idea, said Bramwell. Come on, little bear, we've got some work to do. First of all, we'd better see if we can find the sewing box. At last, after they had searched in all the usual places, little bear found it almost covered by a cushion on the sofa. I thought it would be a wonderful surprise for the dolls if we decorated their house for them explained Bramwell Brown, as he rummaged through the buttons and beads until he found what he was looking for. Tiny coloured glass beads and sequins, a needle and some thread. We can make fairy lights with these for the doll's house, he said. Oh, yes! We'll need a Christmas tree, too. And I think I've seen just the thing, squeaked Little Bear, beginning to feel Christmassy at last. He slipped down from the sofa and rushed off. Leaving Bramwell threading the tiny beads carefully onto a piece of green thread. In no time at all, Little Bear was back, almost hidden by a bushy little tree. It must have fallen off the big Christmas tree, he explained in a voice that was rather full of branch. He put it down next to Bramwell and dashed off again to find a pot. When he returned, Bramwell helped him plant the tiny tree. Together, they packed the soil tightly round its stem to stop it wobbling. And then, very carefully, they wound the fairy lights round and round the tiny branches. It looked exactly like a real Christmas tree. Little Bear was so delighted, he wanted to carry it straight round to the doll's house. Not yet, said Bramwell, who had thought of a few more ideas, while he'd been threading the beads. See if you can find some of the other toys while I look for some paper and some scissors. Little Bear didn't get very far before he bumped into Rabbit. 
<laughs> Make way for the Christmas Express, called Rabbit, looking magnificent in a red fur-trimmed jacket. He was bounding ahead of the wooden train, which was being pulled along by Duck. Duck was wearing a matching fur-trimmed hat and had Little Bear's satchel on to show he was the conductor. It looks lovely, said Bramwell. Rabbit and Duck had stuck holly and ribbons on all the carriages, and it looked very festive indeed. Well, jump aboard, Bramwell, said Rabbit. You two can be our first passengers. Wait a minute, Rabbit, said Little Bear. Bramwell's had a plan. He showed Rabbit and Duck the little tree. We're going to decorate the doll's house, and we want it to be a surprise. If you can take the dolls out for an extra long ride, we could have everything ready by the time you come back. That's a brilliant idea, said Rabbit. Come on, Duck, first stop the doll's house. The train pulled up outside the little house and Rabbit knocked on the door. Hello, dolls. We've come to take you all on a special Christmas outing. The dolls were delighted when they saw the train and Rabbit and Duck soon had them sitting snugly in the carriages. Rabbit tucked them in with little knitted squares of blanket. Then Duck pulled the train slowly forward and the little procession set off in the direction of the Christmas tree. Meanwhile, Little Bear had found plenty of willing helpers and as soon as the dolls were out of sight, they all set to work. They hadn't been able to find any holly small enough for the doll's house, so Little Bear had cut some holly leaf shapes out of green paper. Sailor had cut up some very thin strips of wrapping paper and some of the toys were making doll's house sized paper chains. Bramble Brown had found all sorts of odds and ends and was making a Christmas wreath for the front door. They worked very quickly indeed and when they'd finished everyone helped to carry the decorations over to the doll's house. Little Bear and Sailor were the smallest so they went inside. They hung the paper chains so that they crisscrossed from one corner of the room to the other. Little Bear decorated the mirrors and the pictures with holly. And finally, they placed the Christmas tree in the corner of the room. Then Sailor and Little Bear came out and closed the front door. It looks wonderful, said Bramwell. For the finishing touch, Bramwell stuck his Christmas wreath on the door. Hello, everyone, said Old Bear. I was wondering where you'd all got to. I decided I would make a cake for the dolls as well. In his paws was a tiny cake, covered in white icing with a red bow tied around it. Would you mind giving it to them, Little Bear? I'm afraid I'm too big to get through the front door. I think you should give it to them yourself, said Little Bear. Here they are now. Duck pulled the train to a halt just outside the doll's house. Back just in time for tea, by the look of it, said Rabbit. Come on, dolls, this way, said Bramble Brown, helping them out of the train. The dolls could hardly believe their eyes as they stepped into their house. It looks beautiful. Just like a real home at Christmas, said one of the dolls. Another one rushed off and returned with all the doll-sized socks she could find. We, we'll have to have bare feet until Christmas Day, she laughed. But we don't mind. There are enough socks here for everyone. And she hung them in a row along the mantelpiece. You've all been very kind, she smiled and you've given us the best Christmas present we've ever had. The toys waved goodbye to the dolls, and the little train moved off again, this time in the direction of the sofa. I'm feeling very Christmassy now, yawned Little Bear. I think we all deserve a piece of my Christmas cake before we go to bed, said Old Bear. And no one disagreed with that. <laughs>